everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm here today to do my February wrap up. There is one, two days left in February. Um, but I know that I have finished all the books that I will be able to talk about in February. In case you're new, um, I am a book two prize judge this year and I am judging in the first round in the nonfiction category. Um, I have six books to read in the category uh, before the end of March and I ended up reading, um, I finished three, I have one that I am almost, no sorry, I've finished, yeah, I'm finished three. The fourth one is going to be done definitely in the next day, potentially today if I have a bit more time to read. And um, I have two left to read in March. So I'm not going to be talking about those today, but I will be um, recording all of my thoughts and vlogs and release those after the results for the first round have been um, released. So the books I'm going to talk about today aren't going to take that much time. I have read three other books uh, outside of my Book Two Prize reading this month. And the first book that I finished was a book of short stories called Whatever Happened to Interracial Love. By Kathleen Collins. I uh, really enjoyed this collection of short stories. Kathleen Collins has a cinematic approach to her writing. She writes very succinctly. She um, shares in a very um, clear way um, the lives of people living in the 1970s um, and I just really enjoyed all her perspectives that she presented. She had a lot of a, a range of styles of short stories. So some of them were very short. Some of them were kind of vignettes where you got a perspective of um, a couple and you got the men's perspective and the women's perspective. They were all really um, well thought out stories and presented different ideas of what it is to be black in America, what it is to be black in a woman. Um, I read this as part of the Blackathon 2020 challenge. And this one went with the Aquake and Wednesday challenge, which was to read about a character that challenged the traditional ideas of being a black person. And I think that this short story collection really did that for me. Um, not that I'm author an authority in any way about the black experience, but just from previous experiences that I have read about or, or watched through um, TV or movies, I thought that um, her perspective was a unique one and I would highly recommend it. The next book that I finished for Blackathon was The Book of Night Women by Marlon James. And the um, prompt that I was going by was actually called the Marlon James prompt. And it was to read uh, a story that was not set based in the African-American experience, but in another African descendant experience. And so I read uh, The Book of Night Women, which is set in Jamaica, which is where Marlon James comes from. I actually listened to this on audio and it was narrated by Robin Miles, who did an amazing job covering a variety of accents from Jamaican to um, British, uh, Scottish, Irish, English, uh, lots of different characterizations that I thought she did a wonderful job um, in executing. And I absolutely loved this story. Um, I think Marlon James, his way of writing is very direct, but there's also kind of a mystical underlying element to it. I fell in love with the characters. His characterization is so in depth. His comp his characters are complex. They are uh, they cannot be defined by one thing. They are not stereotypical in any way. The story follows Lilith, who is born on a um, plantation called Montpelier and it is one of the more prestigious plantations, sugarcane plantations in um, Jamaica at the time. It's set in the early 1800s and um, it follows, um, you learn a lot about the colonial history and the slave trade 
in Jamaica and also the slave revolts in Jamaica. And so this story focuses on one such revolt, kind of the beginnings of it, but also covers Lilith's life. Um, Lilith was such an amazing anti-heroine. She, she had a huge capacity for growth as a person. So she, despite the fact that she got very little access to education, she was able to be uh, a person who learned from her mistakes, a person who um, made a decision and then understood the repercussions from it and then either changed her actions or, you know, made mature choices based on what she was had available to her. And I found that really interesting. All of the characters, whether they were black or white, were well-rounded. You didn't see anyone in the story who was there only to represent a stereotype, even though in these types of stories, you can often have that happen because um, you're talking about something that's so horrible and violent, like slavery. And um, But I thought Marlon James handled it brilliantly. Um, I was reminded of something by Brian of Bookish when I was listening to one of his, uh, I don't think it was a Friday Reads, I think it was a Saturday Hodgepodge where he talked about finishing Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. And I read that um, two years ago. And I think that The Book of Night Women and Kindred are actually really good companion reads if you wanted to get two slavery narratives that were offered in depicting different places, but contrasting the experiences, I think it would be a really great comparison. Um, and I think that Marlon James has that depth in his characters that Octavia E. Butler had in hers, which I really appreciated. So I would highly recommend it. I would really recommend it on audio. It is a long audiobook, but it's worth it. I was very wrapped up in the story. I wanted to listen to it more than I was able to because of time. I just uh, was totally engrossed in the story. And I think he's a brilliant writer. And I will definitely continue and write and read all of his um, novels, I think, um, I have found a new writer that I can really admire. So that was great. The third book I'm going to talk about today was not as successful as the, the Book of Night Women. Uh, and that is In a Free State by V.S. Nepal. And I read this book. Uh, it is part of my 1970s project. It won the Booker Prize in 1971, I believe. Um, and also, uh, V.S. Nepal has received the Nobel Prize for Literature. Uh, so, in a free state, uh, what can I tell you about it? Um, it is not a traditional novel format in any way. So, if you struggle with, um, alternate formats, be forewarned. Um, it's really kind of a collection of, it feels like a collection of short stories. And um, there is also a piece of nonfiction writing right at the end for the epilogue. And what Nepal is going for here is to um, give you his observations on race relations at the time. And also a huge theme in these stories was um, the betterment of self um, through immigration, through trying to work in kind of a Western system and what it's like to work in a Western system when you are from a different culture. So I think that is pretty much the things I appreciated about this and everything else I struggled with. I struggled with his style of writing. Um, I struggled with his characterization. I struggled with his um, descriptions of people. I struggled with um, his dialogue. <laughs> I struggled with almost everything. Um, I think there's just a fundamental problem for me in how he writes and how I read. I was also really, um, it was so challenging for me to 
care at all about his characters or to have any sort of com any sort of feeling towards them other than indifference or um, disgust slash disappointment in their actions. Um, I, yeah, it just didn't work for me. And um, I can't even really tell you <laughs> what it's about because it's not really about anything except it's very descriptive of places that aren't even clearly defined in a lot of the stories. So um, I'm not exactly sure why this book would be hyped. And I, I, while I was reading it, I was like, okay, this book isn't for me, but I've heard Dee Dee at Brown Girl Reading talk about um, A House for Mr. Biwas, and she re she gave that five stars. She really loved it. So I thought, okay, I'll read another V.S. Nepal. This is just not my um, V.S. Nepal novel. Um, but when I actually looked at the descriptions of his other novels, I realized that they're all like this. This is his thing, um, his subject matter. He doesn't write women. The one female character that he wrote with any level of detail in this book uh, was, I felt rather a caricature. I, I don't feel like he likes women very much, <laughs> as far as I could tell. Or that's the feeling I received being a woman reading this. Um, and I can read books that are not, don't contain a lot of female characters, but uh, I found this one to, it just felt um, I don't know. It felt like the world didn't have a lot of women in it. And if it did, the women were, um, uh, treated with no complexity and with no, um, kind of with a level of disdain, I would say. And I, I mean, maybe that's just this story, but, um, I don't know how he writes women in other ways. So anyway, I've decided I'm not going to read another V.S. Nepal novel, but I think I will try his nonfiction because the epilogue at the end with his travel writing, um, I actually heard that story before and I'm not sure where I'd heard it. Um, it's a story of him when he was in Cairo um, during the late 60s, early 70s. And um, so I think I'll try his nonfiction. He writes, he wrote a book about India and I will be able to tell very early on in the book if I'm going to continue it because I, there's nothing in here that would compel me to keep reading his work. I just think that I can understand its merit in terms of the time period he was writing these books in and the fact that there probably wasn't any comparable literature that was covering these topics the way he was. So I can understand its importance in that sense. But in terms of for me, the type of reading that I want to do and the type of learning that I want to do and and I, this is just not up my street. So I will uh, take that one as a loss. And again, I'll talk all about all the 1970s project books together in a kind of final video once I finish them. I think I have four left, so it should happen soon. And um, that is it for me for my February wrap up. And I hope to have a few more to talk about in my March wrap up because I will have less of my book two prize reading to do in that month. And I will be back again soon with another video. Thank you very much for watching.